Hello, everyone. I'm Joe Flick with the Montana State Library. I'm the Continuing Educations Coordinator, Continuing Education Coordinator. And I'm here with a couple of folks from the Rural Institute at the University of Montana who are going to talk about the, some of the resources that they have for families that I thought I thought libraries should really know about um, so that you can make referrals to their um, their programs. These are all really valuable resources, especially for families that um, have young children who might be um, experiencing some developmental delays, for instance, or, or um, might have a family member that is um, dealing with a health problem that requires them to get some assistive technology. The Rural Institute helps with all those things, but I'm not going to say any more. I'm just going to pass things off to Shauna Hansen and Jen Banna. Okay. Thanks, Joe. And um, thank you to all the librarians who are and others who are with us today to learn about our program. I'm the center coordinator for the Family to Family Health Information Center. And as Joe said, that's located at the Rural Institute. I'm going to start out by introducing Shauna and I. Shauna is going to take the slides at the end and I'm going to do the beginning. So how did we get involved in this work and who are we? Well, as I said, I'm Jen Viana and the, the little girl there off to the side is my daughter, Hallie. She's now a young adult and she has a rare neurodevelopmental disability called Pitt Hopkins syndrome. And so family to family health information centers are led by parents of children who have healthcare needs. That handsome guy giving us the smolder on the other side there is Gus Hansen. And he's Shauna's son. He's 22 year old superstar nonverbal kiddo with severe autism. When I looked at that picture this morning, I, I said to her, he's, he's got that, you know, that pose going in that one. So we both live in Missoula and our passion for working with families and for people with disabilities both, came both from our experiences within our own families and also for the experiences that we have shared working with families outside of our own. Next slide, please. So a little bit about the Rural Institute for Inclusive Communities. The Royal Institute is a university center for excellence in developmental disabilities, and there's one or more than one in every state. Our center hosts over 50 programs that serve Montanans with disabilities and the providers and the programs who work with them. The Royal Institute's committed to creating better lives for rural people with disabilities and their families with innovative services, trainings, and research. Just to give you a sense of disability, <coughs> excuse me, in Montana, <coughs> 26.5% of adults in Montana have some type of disability, and one in five families have at least one child with a special health care need, which is about 23% of families. Next slide, please. Our center opened on June 1st. We're grant funded by a federal program. Most of the programs within the Rural Institute are funded through grants from a variety of um, private, foundational, um, federal, state grants. We began, as I said, in June of 2019, and we help families navigate healthcare and find strength in community. And we partner with stakeholders to help the stakeholders better, better meet the needs of families. Family to family health information centers are located in every state. So if you travel to another state or you start working in another state, you can be assured that there is a center there and that they are also family led by a family member of a child or a person with a special health care need. Next slide, please. So we serve all Montanans in our particular grant. We serve all Montanan families with children or youth aged birth to 26. But I should say that we don't ever turn anyone away. And I don't think that anybody at the Rural Institute would. Our goal is to provide resources and services. And so if we're not the right program to provide those resources and services, we are not just gonna hang up and hope you find another number to call. We're gonna find out who can help you. So we can be contacted by families or providers or librarians. And our contact information is on this slide and we'll be sending these slides out um, later so that everybody can have access to them. I'm not sure where you'll keep those, Joe, for those that are watching it on a recording, but. Well, I will I'll, I'll just jump in here and tell you that if you go to the um, Aspen, our Aspen e-calendar e e and click on today's events, you'll see the link to the slides with, um, as um, an event resource. So it'll be, it'll be posted right there. Okay, thank you, Joe. All right, next slide, please. 
Um, so when we talk about children and youth with special health needs, that's a federal and a state definition. So what does that mean? So for us, it means children and youth who have or, or are at increased risk for chronic, physical, developmental, behavioral, or emotional conditions, and who also require health and related services beyond that required by children generally. Sometimes to simplify that, um, I say that our, we serve children who see more than a pediatrician on, on a regular basis. That can be um, children who have mental health conditions, who are foster in foster care, children with asthma, children who have been in an accident. And as I mentioned before, we don't, there isn't anybody that we won't try to find some type of resource for. Next slide, please. So here's what we're asked to do by the federal government for our particular grant. We're to inform families about resources that are specific to their needs. We're to help families find each other and network together. Families find a lot of strength in supporting each other and being able to share their experiences from their own lives, their lived experiences. And that's why it's so important that our centers are staffed by family members of children with disabilities and special health care needs. We also alert families to opportunities to participate in political processes. And then we take the needs that we hear from families and we give them back to the programs that serve those families. Next slide, please. So here's some of the projects, or our projects are based on what, we, what we've seen. And so what we're seeing is that families don't feel heard in the processes. The services feel all separated out. And that's one of the ways where I can see like a librarian can help say, well, there's this and there's this and there's this and kind of bring them into the same place. The services are confusing and sometimes the people offering the services are even a little confused and the explanations of services often don't make it clear where families need to go. Then there's also a chronic lack of financial assistance and support for navigating the services once you find them. Next slide, please. So some projects that we have done, one is uh, we were approached by a pediatric dentist in Missoula who wanted more information on working with children with autism in the dentist's office. And so in response to that, we created a presentation about or called Understanding the Sensory Needs of Pediatric Dental Patients on the Spectrum. And we shared with the dentist offices the, um, some ideas for working with kids who were nonverbal and for working with kids with sensory issues and also for working with their families. And we brought in an occupational therapist to help us. So when we hear about something, we have a lot of latitude in our grant to respond and figure out what will be most helpful to stakeholders and families. Next slide, please. We also did a genetics pop-up. And when I was thinking about this this morning, uh, it occurred to me if we were not in a, in a COVID situation right now, this would be a really fun thing to do at the library. A genetics pop-up is like another kind of pop-up where we come in, gather a group of people, and we talk about genetics and the basics of genetics, how to find genetic services in Montana, what to do if you think your child might have a genetic or might need to be seen by a geneticist. And so we provide the basic information and the forms for Montana. So this is something I'm hoping that we can get together with um, some libraries and do once we can travel around again. Next slide, please. We also do training for families to help them be better prepared to serve on groups. And this is any kind of group. So it could be serving on the board at a library. It could be serving on their child's medical team. So we did this via Zoom last spring and we hope to offer it again. We do this in conjunction um, with the Montana Parent Training and Information Center. So we try to bring in as many centers who serve parents as possible and um, help prepare them to work together in a, in a group. Because some parents want to be able to share what's how, how things work for them, but they're not really sure how to, they feel nervous about doing it in a group. So oh, go ahead, Shauna, next slide, please. Uh, so another project that we have that uh, might be of interest to libraries is called Montana Voices Amplified. So this is an essay series or a video series that shares perspectives of people with disabilities and their families in a beautifully designed electronic and paper publication with the intention of sharing as broadly as possible. Shauna, will you share the, the tagline for Montana Voices Amplified? Um, I don't know our tagline. <laughs> so on the spot, to agitate. Oh, oh, oh gosh, yeah. Um, we'd hardly ever use that, but it's um, agitate, advocate. Mm, I'm not gonna remember. Yeah, 
so the, there's a lot of purposes for this. And so, um, sorry about that, Sean, I put you on the spot. So parents or other family members can write about their experiences with um, disability in Montana. And we have some more about, about this later, but this is something if you have parents that come in and you can sense that this would be a good fit for them, um, we pay for the essays and the videos too. So next slide, please. Um, so here's the guidelines for the submission. So the authors get $100 for any submission that we use. And we also help them do the editing and, and the things with their ideas. Shauna helps with that. But we're happy to send out electronic copies or paper copies of any of the voices that we've done that are particular interest to your community. And the link is on that slide. Our most recent one is called A Parent's Perspective. Take it from your new bestie. You can't do everything. And these are four little girls um, who live in, I think, in Great Falls. And their mom just wrote her first um, her first story for us. So that's another way we can send the paper copies to you, but we can also, um, you can find that link if you have people that come in who might be interested. Next slide, please. Um, I would just add, Jen, that um, one of our earlier ones was on how to help your child with a disability learn how to tolerate mask wearing. So that would be a great example for um, maybe some paper copies you might want to have on display in your library to give away. Um, the other one that I would see a value to have in libraries would be our ones on our one on collaborating with teams. So um, how to work with your school team or your care team without alienating team members. That's really tricky for families uh, of children with diagnoses and disabilities. It can get acrimonious very quickly. So um, mm -hmm. just two examples and you can write us and we'll pop them in the mail to you. Mm -hmm. And I did find the tagline. It's agitate, advocate, help each other navigate. So yeah. yeah. We'll work on that. <laughs> so this is another workshop that we have coming up that could be we're doing through Zoom, but could be done in person. So it could be shared at libraries. This is a um, siblings of children with special health care needs often have quite a different growing up than kids who are growing up in a family without someone with a special health care needs. So we're doing a three session workshop that's a presentation on the needs of the typically developing siblings of a child with a diagnosis. And then there's an interactive online sib shop, which we're doing um, via Zoom, but could be done in person. And then the third session is a panel of siblings willing to share their perspectives. And so it's an opportunity for people, for parents and kids to learn about maybe how their lives are a little bit different and what kind of supports are available to siblings and to parents who are trying to um, navigate with kids with a high level of need and typically developing kids and, and all, that that, all that that means for a family. Next slide, please. Jen, before you jump into the next slide, this is Joe. Um, do, you, do you guys have a social media presence at all? Our libraries could maybe cross promote um, what you're doing, what you might be. Yeah. I'm going to let Shauna answer that. She's our outreach coordinator. That's a great question, Joan. And we didn't, I'm not sure we included all of that in here. Go ahead, Shauna. Um, yeah, thank you for asking. So we are on Facebook, the Montana Family to Family. And um, I would be delighted if our posts were shared. And also, if there is a point person for the Montana libraries, um, I would be happy to share links or posts or graphics whenever we're having events. Um, and if you shared that information with your network, people could choose what to promote and what not to. That would Sha be great. Shauna, you can send those to me and we do have a listserv um, among Montana libraries and I'll repost things to the listserv to keep everybody informed. Fantastic, thank you so much. And I will let them know to find you on Facebook and, and, uh, and like your posts so that they can help cross promote. This is great programming um, information for our libraries. Oh, thanks, Super. Joe. Thanks, Joe. We're really proud of the sibling workshop. Um, Shauna and I both have other children who have grown up in our homes as siblings, and we just really see them as a population that kind of sometimes they can end up getting pushed aside because of the demands of a child with a medically fragile condition or a child that has a lot of therapies. And so we think it's important to recognize them as part of the family and making the whole family healthier is going to make you know, everything better for everyone in the family. So yeah, feel free to stop me anytime, Joe, with questions. And if something comes in the chat, I'm kind of watching it, but if something else comes up, go ahead and let me know. Next slide, please. So these are some of the people that we've partnered with. Um, Yearland, which is a regional leadership in neurodevelopmental disabilities program. 
the Montana Developmental Disabilities Program, which is at the state, the Montana Empowerment Center, Family Voices, which is a federally funded program that helps us do our programming. Um, we participate with the Montana Disability and Health Committee. Also, the Mountain States Regional Genetics Network, they do the pop-ups. We also in, um, do work with the Montana Autism Center, which is part of the Rural Institute, and I'll introduce that to you in a minute. The Montana State University Nursing Program provides nursing students for our program. We also work with the CDC Act Early, which I'll be excited to tell you a little more about in a minute too. The Best Beginnings Council, the Rural Dynamics, which is a program out of Great Falls, and Children's Special Health Services. I think that's all. Oh, and Montec. And Shana is going to share about Montec. That is the equipment loan program that Joe mentioned um, at the beginning. Next slide, please. So the Montana Autism Center is a program that is housed at the Rural Institute. It's for Montana for families that have a loved one with autism. There's information, trainings, a service directory, and support. They don't provide evaluations. Uh, however, Shauna and I and our staff reply to the emails that we receive from parents who are looking for some trained assistance with their child with autism. We also have been getting a lot of emails recently from adults who are wondering if they have autism or if they're somewhere on the spectrum who are looking for a referral. We have some links that we're able to send out to get them started. And usually we can find someone, you know, depending on their community, we have a list of people we know are helping with those type of diagnosis. We also get emails um, to the center a lot with people who are gonna move to Montana or are new to Montana and are trying to find autism resources. And as you probably many of you know, Montana is pretty lean for resources. It's pretty um, difficult for families to, to find a resource. And when they do, there's often a big wait list. So one of the other things I want to mention about most of the programs at the Rural Institute and also the programs that we refer to is that we're trying to connect people with each other. So if you have to wait, at least you're waiting with somebody who understands what it's like to wait. Or you're looking for a program knowing that there's somebody else that's been looking for programs too and it was just as hard for them. It's not just that you're doing it badly, it's actually that it's really hard. And when you find someone who understands that difficulty and has walked that path, the, a big load is lifted for people. And you've probably seen that even in your um, work when you say to somebody, well, I know somewhere you can go that you can get help with that. And people are like, probably visibly, oh, my load feels a little bit lighter. Next slide, please. So the, the CDC Developmental Milestones Learn the Science Act Early is one of my favorite programs. So the ambassadors, so this program is not a um, Rural Institute program, but if, the, like, if you hadn't heard of this program, I wanted to share it with you because we use it a lot. This is an app that explains developmental milestones and it has videos of what typical development looks like and it has talking points for going to the doctor if your child's not meeting a milestone and it has tips. It's intended to help um, parents catch autism and other types of disabilities early on, but it's also a pretty fun app to use. Um, the little baby in the previous slide was my grandson and we have used this app to figure out what kind of, oh, this one here, that's my little grandbaby. He's not so little anymore, but um, we've used the app to figure out, okay, in six months when they're going to go on an airplane, what kind of things is he going to be interested in? Um, and then we're also able to see that for a while he was physically really ahead of other kids, but he was talking, was a little bit delayed, and then he started to catch up. And so it's, it's really nicely done, and it's very fun, and it's easy. People could download it right there in the library. If you haven't already heard of this, I just wanted to make sure and share it. We love sharing it with people. So next slide, please. So another project, this is at the Rural Institute, is the Montana Deaf Blind Project. So only, and so when people hear that, and I thought this at first too, so the Deaf Blind Project works with any children who have some component of hearing loss and some component of vision loss at the same time. And so these are not children who are completely deaf and completely blind, which is only about 6% of kids who have deafness and blindness. These are for kids who are struggling with both sight and hearing at the same time. So it may be someone who's got, it, it might, it, you might not always be able to identify who these people are. So this program works with um, early identification and referral, assessment, instruction, technical assistance. Um, they can also help with professional development and they also help um, teachers and parents and they serve kids birth through 21. Again, I would say we don't turn people away. Those are the, the grants give us some hard ages to cut off, but nobody says you're too old to be calling here. Don't call here anymore. We help you out. So next slide, please. 
So we also have a program at the Real Institute for guardianship and other options for people with disabilities. This project is called a transition and employment project. So there's a lot of transitions that um, children with disabilities make. They transition away from school into being, being in the workforce or they transition from um, like pediatric medicine to adult medicine. So this is about, this project is about those kind of transitions. And then guardianship is often called least restrictive or is often called um, supported decision-making now. There's a real push to have the dis person with the disability be the center of their own decision-making. So there's fact sheets, links, and um, there's even someone that you can, that people can talk to about how to develop a guardianship plan for their loved one. And this is a big concern for lots of families. What's gonna happen? Who's gonna take care of my child? When, when I'm not here or who's going to, how are they gonna make decisions when they become an adult and, um, and they're maybe not around me anymore or do I need to be the one to make those decisions? And that's a really difficult decision for families, but we have this website and a group that also works in this. Next slide, please. Okay, I'm going to pass it off to Shauna now. We've come into her, her area of expertise and I will be back on to close us out in a little while. Hello, I just wanted to say about the guardianship piece. Schools start talking to family members about guardianship when um, kids are 16-ish. Um, but if your school's not talking about guardianship with families with kids with disabilities early, it can kind of cause panic um, because guardianship and all the lesser restrictive options take time to set up. And some of them involve lawyers and courts and um, the thought of having, you know, suddenly six months before you're locked out of your child's um, medical care decisions, you're not permitted at school meetings that senior year if they've turned 18 without the child's permission, and it becomes a panic situation. So I think that's a really good resource to direct families to when they have a child with a disability who's getting into those mid-teens. Um, Montana Telecommunications Access Program is also not a rural institute program, but it's a really important one and one we refer people to um, from Montech quite a bit. So they're tasked to ensure that every Montanan, regardless of ability, can communicate by phone. So if you're hard of hearing, if you're deaf, if you're nonverbal, if you've had a stroke and your speech is unintelligible, um, you're not going to be able to communicate by phone. So they provide devices um, so that people can do that. And one of the devices they provide is an iPad because somebody who's nonverbal or who uses sign, sign, excuse me, sign language is going to need to be able to communicate via video. And so um, this is an excellent service to access. If you have a family in your community with a person who's nonverbal and they can't afford an iPad, it might be that MTAP would buy them an iPad in a communication app. So super resource to keep in mind. There is an income eligibility for MTAP. Um, and I would add that there are no income eligibility issues with the Rural Institute programs. Our Rural Institute programs are really available to anybody. So I am the outreach coordinator for the family to family and also for Montech, which is the state's assistive technology program. There's one in every state. <clears throat> we are federally funded. We don't sell anything. And what we do is alone assistive technologies and adaptive equipment, and then provide free training on everything that we have in our loan inventory. So sometimes I explain to people, we are the library of AT. <laughs> for Montana. We serve all Montanans, um, all ages, any kind of disability, and that includes disability that comes with aging. So a lot of people who are aging don't think of themselves, obviously, as a person with a disability or an impairment. But um, as you age and your vision and your hearing start being a bit impaired, Montec has a lot of equipment that can help people maintain their independence, maintain their ability to live at home. So we provide free demonstrations of AT, which means a person can make an appointment and come into our office, either in Billings or Missoula, 
or we can do it online. And we spend one to two hours with this person and their support folks, if they want anyone else with them. And we just explore different kind of assistive tech solutions. And then they can decide um, what might be a good fit for them, take it home and try it out for a month. We also do evaluations. So these evaluations are a paid service and basically a person ends up with a report um, that they can use to help procure funding from insurance or to get uh, Medicaid waiver to pay for something, that kind of thing. And then we do team trainings on requested topics. And the heart of our program is our free loans. And as of January 1st, we cover shipping, both um, shipping to a person in Montana and also return shipping, which is really awesome because to ensure some of these things to ship can get outrageously expensive. So that is a barrier that no longer exists and we're really excited about it. So adaptive equipment, um, that's often mobility equipment, feeding, seating systems, um, positioning equipment. And so that equipment can be borrowed for six months at a time. And we do require approval from a therapist or a physician. It's a super brief one page form that they can upload um, just, just so that we know that they're safe for this equipment. Because obviously if it's misused, it's gonna be potentially dangerous. And we have a lot of a, a wide range of this kind of equipment, but a great deal of it is pediatric because for kids, by the time they get Medicaid or insurance to cover the cost of say a walker, maybe six months have passed and they've actually outgrown that walker. So they can borrow a walker from us for six months at a time uh, to use during a, a growth spurt or to kind of fill that gap while they're waiting for funding. Our assistive technologies are available to borrow for 30 days at a time. And if no one's waiting for the device, we'll extend that another 30 days. So up to 60 days. And we have equipment for hearing, vision, learning, computer access, and communication. And you don't have to prove to us you have a disability to borrow any of those things. You don't have to get approval from a doctor. Um, if you have something undiagnosed, if you have eye fatigue, you can borrow computer glasses from us. If you have carpal tunnel, you can borrow an adapted keyboard and adapted mouse from us and see if that's gonna make a difference for you. All free. We also have Wheels Across Montana, a Montec program where we house adaptive trikes. So, and this slide to the right, I'm gonna turn on my laser pointer. This is my boss at Montec and she's riding one of our adaptive trikes. So you can see it has extra support, um, belts, pedal straps. We also have trikes more like this, recumbent tandem. Um, we have quite a few recumbent trikes. So anyone with tremors, balance issues, um, the tandems are great for somebody who has low vision, needs a sighted person to ride in the front. Um, maybe somebody whose partner has dementia and they need, they, they want to go out together, but, um, you know, having them each on their own bike is just not an option. So our trikes are available to borrow for 30 days at a time. And we have them in Helena, Missoula, Billings, Fort Peck, and Dillon. So this year we also accessed um, the Montana Family to Family got a CARES grant for $15,000 and we used it to purchase equipment that is housed at Montec. And it's all equipment meant to support telehealth appointments, um, telehealth therapy, remote learning, and just participation in this world that's suddenly almost completely online. So I know libraries, Montana libraries are loaning out hotspots. Maybe you only got two for your library. If you have more need, uh, send them to Montec. Montec has quite a few hotspots now with this grant and we can mail them and someone can keep it for up to 60 days. Webcams, tablets, um, laptops, microphones, headsets, and then gimbal. I have a quick video about gimbal. 
and I'm all by myself out here and I've got the need to record something and it's good to have a gimbal to do this so that you have a smooth recording. Now I've, I'm reviewing the gimbal here, the G-I-M-B-O-W-L. It's called an owl because, gimbal, because it's like an owl. It has a 360 degree capability. It can follow you all the way around, whichever way you go. As long as your face is in the frame, it's recognizing your face. Another cool feature, you don't have to hit record button and jump in front of the camera. Once you step in front of the camera, it recognizes your face and says, I'm gonna start recording. It does a countdown, even gives you an audio beep. This is a great gimbal, a great follow gimbal. Find um, under 50 bucks online. I found this one under 50 bucks. So the gimbal for under 50 bucks, great. It's tripod mount, table mount. Um, does have some smoothing issues, but for the price point, I don't think you can beat it. I think it's probably one of the best gimbals, the follow gimbals you can do if you want to do something that goes around. My opinion. So we really got gimbal for um, the family to family service, a lot of young families. And so if families are trying to participate in speech or physical therapy from their living rooms, they've got their hands full trying to keep their kid in frame follow the therapist's instructions, it, it can get ridiculous real fast. So this is something that could hold their phone and keep them in frame, even if they've had to get up and chase their four-year-old across the room. So um, also my boss is an OT who uh, teaches infant massage. And so this frees up her hands so that she can demonstrate on a baby doll, how do you massage your infant? And um, you know, it's all hands-free, keeps her in frame. So these are all available to borrow from Montech thanks to the F2F grant. Montech carries AT for memory support um, and for activities of daily living. So on the left, this is a food prep board for somebody who's lost use of one arm, um, kind of holds, holds the food into place. You can lock it into place so you can cut it. We have a number of kitchen uh, tools for people who are doing one-handed cooking. This is the icon for Google Keep. We really like to teach people about Google Keep because there are location-based reminders. So a person can make a list of questions for their doctor and then that note will come up when they get to the doctor's office. So really nice reminder for people who are maybe struggling with memory or keeping track of all their appointments um, or their activities of living like grocery lists and that sort of thing. And then we do have a number of pill boxes. This is auto pill, so it locks, uh, has reminders. You can only get one day's pills at a time. So just um, some aging in place supports. We do a ton of work with communication. This is a probably a two or $3,000 speech generating device. Um, basically, it's an iPad with an expensive app that has been locked, so you can't use it as an iPad. And this is the um, silly way that insurance companies will fund communication devices sometimes. Sometimes they won't fund an iPad with an app, but they'll fund an expensive locked up version. This is app to speak. It's a communication app designed for uh, with people, adults with dementia in mind. A really nice, simple, straightforward app that's easy to customize. So we recommend it for older couples. If, if one is starting to have memory issues, it's gonna be an easier communication app for the partner to learn. And then of course there's um, low tech options like communication buttons and no tech options like paper visual supports. We have a lot of vision equipment. I would say, I would, if I were to guess, I would say one third of Montex clients are pediatric with um, needs for adaptive equipment. One third are communication issues. And then probably a third would be vision. That, that would be the bulk of the people we see. So on the left is a device that magnifies anything you place on the black, this black tray. Um, and then it also has a camera, so it will magnify a board or a PowerPoint or a teacher up front of the room. It's really designed for classroom learning. We have another one that actually has a Surface Pro mounted. Um, and that one, it would read text aloud for people. If you put a, a newspaper or a book down here, it's gonna read that aloud. 
for the low vision person. And then we have more simple video magnifiers, simple lit up magnifiers, all kinds of vision equipment. AT for hearing on the left, this is a personal amplification device. On the right, this is Flipwriter. It's an app designed for somebody who can't um, communicate verbally. Um, so maybe a person who is deaf and maybe has speech that's difficult to understand, trying to communicate with a bank teller in a bank. So he can type his message and it, it's showing up in real time on the flip side of the screen. We have a number of supports like that. Um, a lot of times people with communication issues who do have speech, their speech is complicated when they're under stress. So um, one man said, all I wanna do is be able to order a Big Mac at McDonald's, but I get in line and McDonald's is crazy and there's 10 people behind me and I can't do it. So there's a really simple app that, you know, we, we set up a little card. I want a whatever meal number three, size medium, blah, blah. And then he could just tap that on his screen and show it to the cashier. So lots of different solutions with our smartphones and our um, iPads. We do work with hands-free computer access. If you have people in your community who have had an accident and don't have the use of their hands and arms or have dexterity issues, um, fatigue issues, people with progressive diseases that are complicating their ability to use a computer. We do work with <clears throat> speech to text. We have a lot of wearable mice, so people don't have to use their hands or their arms. And then this, I'm just gonna show a little clip of Smile Mouse. Close your face. Oh, jump the gun, see. here we go. Hello, my name is Todd. I'm disabled from the shoulders down due to multiple sclerosis. Um, I'm making this video to introduce people to Smile Mouse. Smile Mouse is a hands-free, voice-free, Windows-based mouse that uses only a standard webcam. The Smile Mouse software follows your face, as you can see, from the green lines on my eyebrows and mouth. And when you want to click, all you do is smile. You can see the strength of your smile in the green bar to the right of the smile mouse window. If you want to click and drag, all you do is smile a little bit longer and move your head. The drag will end when you stop moving your head. If you want to right click or double click, you use the click options window. For example, when you want to right click, you highlight the, the right click and you'll get a right click. When you want to double click, to highlight the double click and you get a double click. As you can see, after you do one click, one right click or one double click, it goes back to the left click. If you want to do multiple right clicks or double clicks, just click on the lock in the upper right hand corner. <coughs> I use Smile Mouse to control my TV cable box, to text my family, to play games, and even control my thermostat. Pretty much everything I'm able to do by myself is because of Smile Mouse. So I'm going to stop that there. Um, that's a higher tech AT solution. We also work with eye gaze control of um, computers. And uh, you can do it with some iPads now as well. I would just add here that um, 
first of all, these aren't things you need to know about. You just need to know that you can send people in need of higher um, complexity solutions to us. It's our job to research devices, to have devices on hand, to help people learn the devices. Also, you might be thinking, uh, the patron I have in mind for something like this is broke. So what point is there to even try it? And Montech does have access to some funding information. We do try and help people get the things they need. And we're used to working um, with companies to help make things happen. So that's not to say we do that process for people, but we um, give them a direction to go and help as we're able. We do have a lot of supports for people with dyslexia or people who maybe just never um, have been able to read well. So we have apps and we have tools. Um, this is an icon for SnapType. So that is an app for somebody with illegible handwriting. They can take a picture of a form and then they can fill the form in with text and then they can download it, print it or email it straight from the app. Speechify, you can take pictures of pages and it will read the pages aloud. So a nice support for kids in school. Um, and then CPEN, you can scan a line or a paragraph at a time and it will read that line aloud. It also has a dictionary feature. So you can scan a word and hear the dictionary um, definition. And then we also have a CPEN that doesn't have the dictionary option so that you can use it during testing and it won't be a, um, you won't be able to cheat with it. So lots of different devices and supports. Um, we also talk about Bookshare some. So if you send somebody to us with dyslexia, we have a lot of options to bring to the table for them to explore. So this is just an example. If you sent somebody to us for help at Montech, say they have Parkinson's and they have tremors and the tremors are really starting to affect their quality of life. So Montech has a walker called U-Step that's specifically designed with Parkinson's in mind. Um, it has a laser that shows up here, a laser line that can be a foot guide for them. It has a button up here you can turn on that clicks. So if they get frozen, it's kind of an audio cue for them to take a step. And also it doesn't roll unless you're squeezing the brakes. So reverse braking. So that's a good device that's specifically for people with tremors, weighted pen for tremors, weighted silverware. And then this is Steady Mouse. So Steady Mouse, is a mouse designed to ignore inadvertent clicks and to not respond so much to tremors. So you can see when Steady Mouse is now enabled and now it's disabled. And that's what it looks like when the person with tremors is managing the mouse. So you can see that would make a huge difference. If Steady Mouse didn't work for somebody, it's possible that um, one of our wearable mice would work or an eye gaze system might work um, depending on whether they have tremors in their head. I like to watch that video. I think it's amazing the difference. Okay, Montec also has a financial loan program. So if there's no other funding source, we do have a program you can apply for. And if you're approved, you can get up to $1,500 at 0% interest or up to 50,000 at three and a half percent interest. And so this was designed because banks won't loan money for most of this equipment. Um, and so we wanted to offer a non-predatory loan option. And that loan option is metal. So you can use it for home modification, vehicle modification, assistive technologies, accessible vehicles, hearing aids. Um, and Jen and I were talking about this earlier and we just wanna point out that if somebody needs money for a piece of equipment or a, a change and they don't see it in the list, that doesn't mean it wouldn't be covered by this loan program. So they should contact MADL, which is managed for us by Rural Dynamics and just ask because the odds are good if they need it because they have a disability 
they could use the loan program to pay for that. And um, repayments are set at a low, a low um, level so that people can afford to use this program. So this is how you contact Montech. Our website is clunky. We're always hoping to change it and always running into some obstacle preventing us from doing so. Hopefully in this next year, we'll get it done. But um, your patrons can call us and we'll just talk to them about what their issues are and we'll tell them what we have and they don't have to get discouraged by our website. Just contact us directly. Okay, are there any questions about Montech? That um, the demonstration of the of the mouse, mouth, mouse, <laughs> that, that's amazing. Um, and it's really good to know that you guys keep up on all that technology so that we don't have to. Um, you know, at the state library, we provide um, a, a reading program for people who have physical disabilities that prevent them from reading standard text so they it might be a physical disability but most often it's a sight disability mm -hmm. um and and that program i i'm going to make sure that those folks who are talking to the patrons they have about 2500 patrons that they regularly provide um reading materials to these are primarily um books on tape uh, and I'll let them know about some of this because I think this would they, they, they could be um, referring some people to you. That is great. Thank you so much. Jen, I'll turn it back to you. Okay, thanks, Jenna. <clears throat> I, I always learn something when I watch the presentations from Montech, like who knew we had wearable mice in, in 2021, right? Um, and I also want to add that libraries could check out equipment from Montech for their patrons to use to see if it works, like when someone comes in and uses a, you know, if you need a device at your front desk, so when someone comes in, they can use it to talk to you. And then that way you would know if that would be a good purchase for your library to make for people with disabilities who use your library. So you don't have to be a person with a disability to check out the the technology, you can be a person who serves people with disabilities. So technology has been checked out to schools, childcare, um, churches could check out technology. So all kinds of places in your communities could check out the, this technology. It wouldn't just have to be an individual. Um, next slide. Is there another slide, Shauna? Next slide. Oh, yeah. You can get a hold of us directly or you can refer people to us and we'll um, provide an introduction. And, we use the word soft handoff and and so we try really hard not to say to people um well yeah you should call the state health department and they'll fix that for you or call we try to say to people you know you should call joe at the library or you should you know we try really hard to make sure that we're getting um, families or stakeholders to the person who can actually help them instead of that pushing one push two and we really enjoy finding answers to questions that we don't know the answer to. So if we don't know um, the best place in a certain county or the best resource for someone with a certain type of question, we learn a lot about what families need and what, what's going on for them by being able to find the answers to those questions. And I think I can speak for everybody at the Rural Institute when I say that you know, part of our mission statement is to be able to help people with disabilities live their life to the fullest, including recreation and all those parts of our lives that are important. And so I think all the programs at the Rural Institute are um, grateful when people call and are excited to be able to try to find the supports that will be the most helpful. Is there another slide, Shauna? Is that the last one? Oh, and then this is the last slide. And I have to say, I love the pictures of our kiddos. So. Um, it's really fun for us to collect pictures of the kids across our state that have special health conditions. Um, and I, part of the reason I, I get so excited about my job is I love working with the kids. I love working with the families and I, I'm really thankful to be able to work with these other programs that we have um, at the Rural Institute and watch the ways that they're able to change other people's lives. So I just wanna thank you again, Joe, for um, inviting us here today to share this information with you and, and the other librarians and those who might be watching this recording. Um, and we're just here to help if there's any way we can help connect people with resources. 
So thanks. Well, thanks to all of you. And I, I have, um, I just checked to see, we didn't have a ton of people pre-registered for today. And again, I, we, we should have thought it's a day after a holiday weekend, probably not the best day that we picked, but um, I, I know that we will get a lot of people who will be watching the recording. So if you are watching the recording, be sure to collect your credit. Um, for viewing this recording by logging into Aspen and claiming credit for today's event. You'll find it on, on February 16th, 2021. It'll be listed there. So just click on that to get your credit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop our recording now. There's just a couple of comments in the chat box about the great work that you do and uh, thanking you. And um, I just hope that we can maybe get do this again face to face sometime at a library conference. It would be great for you to bring some of your um, assistive technology, some of those uh, iPads and whatnot to kind of demonstrate too. I think that would be really helpful. Um, and we are building out, um, you know, we do have a courier system among libraries, so I can really see where um, we might be able to um, borrow equipment to demonstrate and and the and for and to share some of the programming that you guys can do with with communities across Montana. I think that would be terrific. So thank you. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Shauna. Really great to have you here. Thank you so much. I feel like libraries are the um, core and heart of our rural communities, the library and the church. So thank you. you. You play a huge role and we really feel privileged to be invited to present. I think that's really true. Libraries, churches, and schools, maybe you could add those in um, to some degree, are, are just uh, um, sometimes the, the point of information for communities. So glad to have you. I'm going to go ahead and stop our recording. <laughs>